day everyone, it's Tuesday the 16th of April and the time is 5.30 in the afternoon. I suppose you could call it evening, I know some people call it evening. Anyway, today's video is all about die cast. <laughs> I've got a lot of it um, to show you all, or at least those that are interested because I know I have a, a wide variety of uh, subscribers and followers. I know some follow me for the model railway stuff, I know some follow me for the die cast, I know some will follow me for the barricade lamps and stuff. Anywho, what I've got on the desk at the minute is a mix of some brand new Hot Wheels. Some of it is still packaged, I haven't actually ripped it open yet. Um, a bunch of stuff that I've got off the die cast guy, and some of it I cannot remember for the life of me if I've. Uh, already shown you or not so my apologies if you've already seen a handful of these items um, and some car boot finds oh and a few cherry shop finds in all this as well I haven't got no desk space <laughs> it's covered in die cars Right, I'm going to start the Hot Wheels stuff so we can get the new stuff out of the way. Now, the first lot is all loose because, of course, I've ripped it all open already. And I know the lighting's not very good. I'm experimenting with lighting at the minute. I've screwed four batten lamp holders to the ceiling. Um, and I've got two CFLs in there at the minute because I ran out of LED bulbs and two LEDs here. But the problem, I think, is... I put these ones too close to me, I need to put them that way a bit, so I've got more light coming that way. That's what I was trying to achieve, a bit more of a all-around illumination rather than just relying on spotlights that only sort of light up half of you. So the spotlights aren't connected at the minute. So at some point I am going to just put a longer bit of flex between these two so I can move these two further that way and see how that looks. Anywho. New die cast. I've actually got an empty pot here that I can put them in. We have a Ford Mustang. Oh yeah, and I haven't forgotten, I will take the camera off the tripod and we'll go and have a, um, a close look at the 1.8 scale Mustang. A little Lamborghini. I can't remember what though, because now it's a Lamborghini. I can't remember what this one is. Is that an Alfa Romeo? Nope, a Lotus Esprit S1. Um, there's a couple of fantasy cars here that I'm probably not going to put in this tub because I don't want them. I'll probably donate them to charity. That's what I normally do with them. Because I find you can't sell them anywhere. You know, no other toy collectors want them. <clears throat> or die cast collectors I should say they all want the uh, you know the actual cars ah that's the Alfa Romeo Mazda police written on it is that an RX-7 or something I can't remember yep that one. Oh yeah, it's one of the two Honda Civics. And all of these, what I'm showing you first, they all came from a couple of eight car gift packs. Pardon me. An um, early Skyline. I don't know what year exactly, I just know it's an earlier model of it. Uh, the red. Audi Quattro. Oh, and this video could be quite lengthy because I have got quite a lot to go through, just a heads up. I think this is another fantasy race car, but I do actually like this one. Yeah, it is, and I can't quite... Read, I can read everything else apart from 
news, but I quite like that one, so... See, I do like some of the fantasy models, just not all of them. We've got this funky looking Camaro. Uh, there's the other Honda Civic. And I've just realised that it's got tiny back wheels on it. I'm assuming that's done deliberately because this would be a front wheel drive car in real life. So I guess that would actually make sense. You've got the bigger tyres because you've got all your power going to your front wheels. I mean, what do you do with a rear wheel drive cars? You put your bigger wheels on the back, don't you? So. Um, that's another fancy car. I'm really not sure if I want to keep that one or not. I don't think so. Oh, it is a nice looking car, but for now that can go down there. Then we've got a little coupe here. See, this shows that Hot Wheels release a lot of older castings because it's just got copyright 1997 on it. 1932 Ford. Seems to be, seems to be rather, a very common car to hot rod. <clears throat> then again, I have to say, they do look nice, in my opinion. And that is coming from someone that actually prefers to restore cars back to originality than the custom work. I'm not against custom modifications, though. It's just really not the sort of thing I would choose to do unless I'm being completely spontaneous one day. I've got another fantasy thing there that I don't like. And I have no idea, I think this is a fantasy vehicle. It's got a big parachute on there so it's a drag car of some sort. Super VOR, I think it says on there. It so, kind of reminds me of a Ford Focus, maybe? Or something like that. I'm going to keep that one. That one's going to be a keeper. Alright, that tub of loose stuff down there for the time being. I've also got a five car gift pack here. The Drift, Hot Wheels Drift. In with a fancy car in it. It does look like we've got a Dodge Viper, a Toyota AE86, um, a Dodge Charger, and of course the Mustang. And of course they got to throw at least one fancy car in there. I think that's a fancy car anyway. So it's a set yet to open. I'm pretty certain it is a Dodge Viper at the top there. It looks like I'm going to open it now. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to open it now because that is cur making me curious. Should have got my uh, standing light from the kitchen. Are you a Dodge Viper? You certainly look like it to me. Made in Indonesia. Well, that's new to me. Yep, Dodge Viper. No, I probably wouldn't say no to a Dodge Viper in real life. I, I actually do like those. Probably so I could actually sell it and then go and get a Mustang. <laughs> there's the AD86, and there's the Dodge Charger. Of course, the Mustang. So, check it out for now, clear up in a bit. The dreaded shiny base. Yeah, this uh, actually hasn't got anything written, I've just got the copyright on it. Mattel, Hot Wheels, blah blah blah. So, yeah, that is just a, a fantasy a vehicle. I vote to donate that one to charity. There'll be a child out there somewhere that would like that. You know, I'm pretty certain that's why they had the 
fantasy stuff because it probably is aimed more at the kids rather than the collectors. Right, so I've still got some more stuff here in packets. So I've got these, <clears throat> the long card versions, from um, the Morrison's local or whatever Morrison's call their small stores uh, in the village where my mum lives. So we've got the Pagani Zonda R. We've got the Group C Fantasy Car, and I actually really like that design. I just I thought my camera would turned on at the mains. And a bit of vintage here, we've got a BMW 507. To be opened. <laughs> Isn't going to be open, and for now, that one isn't going to be opened. I'll show you those in a minute. Honda Civic, I actually like the gold with the red rims, I think that looks nice. Oh, it's got the red interior as well. I think that color scheme actually does work really well. The red, gold, and black. Now, this one, I th I'm pretty certain I bought this in error because I'm pretty certain I've already got that skyline. It's a skyline, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why I'm not going to open that one yet, because I'll just stick it on eBay as it is or something. And I found my second RS 2000. So now I can open one and leave one in a packet. Right. Stuff that I got from the diecast guy, I think that's what I'm going to do next, including what I got from him on the car or at the car boot on um, Saturday. So I'm gonna start with some stuff that's here actually. I've got a tank I got a while back. May have already shown this on the channel, I can't remember. I think I just left things far too long and I've just forgotten. I have got another one of these, but the turret, the um, gun is broken off. I think it's still got the soldiers sticking out of the top there, but it has got its tracks. So I've kept the other one because I think it's worth it just for the tracks. But that is in lovely condition actually for a matchbox uh, tank. I don't know what the tank is. <laughs> if it's actually based on any real tank or not, I don't know. Uh, oh, it's a Chieftain. 1974. Well, it's the first time I've seen that on the bottom. Copyright 1974, Lesney Prods & Co. Limited. I've never seen Lesney Prods & Co. That is a first for me. I'm going to put that with the Hot Wheels because that's a loose vehicle. Um, right. I'll start with what I got a while back. And I've got some stuff over here, actually. I might as well go in that box. So, got that as well. It's not in mint mint condition. There's a few little marks on some of the edges here, but it is in great condition considering. And it's still got the canopy. I come across so many of these that have lost the canopy. I suppose because it's plastic, it just gets broken. And I found a car to put in it. Now I did Google this and it seems like there is a variety of race cars that this came with. This was one of them and this is the best one I've got. So I'm gonna keep those two together. I haven't managed to get the back door open on it yet to put it in. Uh, and we've got this, the military version. I can get it in the light. I don't know how well it's showing up. It looks so dark, like a dark shadow on my screen. So that is a version that I didn't have. Um, you know, I got these quite a while back from a diecast guy, well over a month ago. A couple of tractors. That one's a case, and I think that one's an international. I think. I want to say Massey Ferguson, but it doesn't look that much like a Massey to me. And I got this little thing. 
Now, I've got another one of these trailers, but I didn't have to cab for it. And I think my other trailer is in slightly better condition than this, so I may swap them at some point. Uh, I've got a dinky. A dinky uh, Bedford. Well, it just says crash truck on the bottom. But uh, it's actually a Bedford TK. Which is the whole reason why I wanted it, because I do like the Bedford TKs. And another car transport. The blue and gold DAF one. I've got four of these in the orange and yellow. And the diecast guy in his car boot store has actually got another orange and yellow one. Which is in superb condition, which has actually been tempting me for a while. So I want to buy it, but then I think, I have got so many car transports, do I need any more? Do I need any more? No. Do I want another one? Yeah. <laughs> Should I buy another one? Probably not. Um, I think, that's it for over there, the rest are behind me. Yeah, no. This lot, yeah, it must be a good sort of five, six weeks ago now, but he sent me a photo of these. Now I just asked if there was anything in this job lot of toys he had that I wanted. So I said, well, yeah, I can see a few that I wouldn't mind. So he said, well, pop round then and have a look. So I did. So I bought off quite a few. Now, these interested me because I don't have many Lone Stars. So we've got Lone Star police car. Ford Zodiac. The police is getting quite worn on the hood there, but we have got the larger Lone Star Taxi, London Cab. We've got this one, which is not quite 176. It's a little bit larger, actually. It's a 173. Because Lone Star put the scales on them, on the bottoms. But my thinking is, because that is a large American land yacht, <laughs> as we like to call them, I might get away with it, you know, on my layout as a 176 scale. Oh, it's something so small, and they've put the jeweled headlights in it. Isn't that lovely? And the uh, trunk opens. I don't know if the, does the hood open? Yeah, the hood opens as well. You know, I was interested in these Lone Stars because you don't find them that often. You can find them on eBay, but a lot of sellers want a lot of money for them. <clears throat> okay, what's next? Let's do these two next. So I also got these when I picked those up, a couple of uh, consoles. This one was a bit more than that one, because this one's rougher. Oh, I've actually just realised, despite both being corgi, one is actually newer than the other. Look at that. Bases are different. Don't worry, I will get this lighting situation sorted. And we have got an Austin A105. I think it's dinky. Yep, that's a dinky. And a dinky uh, Jaguar Mark 10. I'm standing those in the wrong part, I've just realised. Uh, and yeah, when I picked those lot up, I went and got these two with them as well. The um, Superior Criterion Ambulance and uh, Stewed Baker Golden Hawk from Corgi. Yeah, I've got Pinky and Corgi. 
Now, when I was at the car boot Saturday, I did notice that the diecast guy had another one of these, but it was in blue with an, um, an electric flashing light on the roof. I am hoping, weather permitting and bike behaving permitting, <laughs> to uh, go back to the car boot Saturday. So if it's still there, I might buy it. Depends on you know what I'm in the mood for buying. Um, <clears throat> and the same with that car transport. I'll think about it. There's nothing that I desperately want, so. Now, um, when I went to pick up that 1.8 scale Mustang, I did get a few other items that he'd got in as well. I've got this little Corgi Cortina. And this dinky Mark 1 Ford Escort, I'm pretty certain I've got it in orange, but I know for a fact my other orange one is way worse than this. It's got virtually no paint left on it. Um, now, he was thinking that someone has put the white stripes on this themselves, but I'm pretty certain my other one has remnants of white stripes on it too. I just need to go into my box of dinky and dig out the other one. Why is it? Every one of these I've had, the doors just don't seem to shut properly on them. This as well, Dinky Ford D800 tipper truck, and we both are certain that they, <coughs> excuse me, they um, used the same chassis they used for the street sweeper, and this one dips. Apparently, so I've been told, it's uh, in a rarer colour. This green. I might end up taking some of those models out of there. Now this one, he threw in for free. That was all wrapped up, ready with the Mustang. Um, so I've now got this one in red. I've got it in blue as well, which is up on the shelf in the bedroom. And I did have another one of these in blue, but I can't remember if I sold it or not. Oh, the wagon, oh, the box does come off. Ah, I wonder if this is interchangeable with the ones on the big rig trailers that I've got in the other room. London and Geneva container service. I don't you say what the truck itself is. Scammel, I think. Yeah. It's a scammer. Right. So, sticking with the uh, diecast guy theme, um, obviously I went to the Alsham car boot last Saturday and he was there. And I spent a grand total of 15 quid on three models. Um, this was one of them. Corgi Lincoln Limousine. Now, this is actually the third Lincoln Limousine I've got. Um, reason being, I've got the first one in a job lot and it's just total garbage basically. It's just like a spare parts model. There's no tar well, there's half of a tyre left on one wheel and the other wheels haven't got any tyres. Um, and it's in really rough shape generally, all the paintwork is all rough and whatnot. Um, and it's missing the battery cover, all the electrics actually, for the little light, for the light up TV. There's a TV in the back that is meant to light up. Um, and then I found another one, which was in better condition than the first one, <laughs> but still missing all the electric gubbins underneath. You can see that's where the battery goes in there. Um, and then I found this one that the diecast guy had on Saturday and I thought I'll have that one as well because that's even even nicer condition and complete. 
and I thought I'm not going to argue for a fiver. So here we are. Right. I also got a couple of um, Jaguar police cars. We've got the XJS police and that one as well. Now, I have got this one over there on display, but not in a box. And actually, when I was at the car boot, I could not remember if I already had this one or not. So I thought for five pounds, I'll buy it anyway. So I thought if I've got it, I'll just keep one in a box and one loose. Um, I'm not sure about this one. I mean, this one is flattened about a bit in there, so I would like to keep some of these models in a box. It would be nice. I think I've only got like one more down on the storage bit there, which is uh, boxed. So I'm actually pretty certain this other one that I've got over there was boxed as well. And using the same light bars, Corgi, is just cheap and cheating. <laughs> Smart, but still cheap and cheating. I think that is it for the diecast guy. Um, so I th oh no, it isn't. This was thrown in as a freebie as well when I picked up the um, Mustang because I asked about it. Because I'm pretty certain I've got the cab for this trailer. And I actually had this exact one when I was a kid. But actually, as a kid, I lost the boat and don't know what happened to the trailer. <laughs> so, I was actually quite happy to see that with the boat still intact. Just take some of these larger models out of this box and I want to put all the little ones in there. But for some reason, I start stacking all these big ones in there. I'm going to blame it on lack of sleep because I didn't sleep too well last night for some reason. I really don't know why. Okie dokie. Oh. See, this is how well my brain is working. That was a freebie from him as well. Little uh, Corgi Ford Escort. Right. Um, I've got an item here that I got from the charity shop, actually. You'll never believe what I actually paid for this. Because I can't believe that's what they priced it at, actually. One pound. Yep. It's worth more than that. See, I don't understand charity shops and how they price things, because... You could go into one charity shop, this came out of the community shop by the way, um, and you'll find that they very often underprice things for what they're actually worth. Um, and then you could walk into a completely different charity shop and find that they've overpriced certain things. Um, now I know some charity shops do use eBay as a guideline. The problem there is what they tend to do when they do their searches is look at the buy it nows that people have got up there, you know, and take that as the value of the item, which isn't always true. You know, just because that's what they're asking doesn't mean that's what people are willing to pay. You know, just for fun, I've watched items on eBay in the past. And I'm not kidding, I have watched items for well over a year, in some cases two, maybe three years, just to see if it ever sold, and it didn't. And I actually have finally got bored watching it and deleted it out of my watch list. I can't remember what the item was now. If I could and I searched it, I bet it's still up there. But yeah, that's worth. To be fair, for something like this, and those police cars, I would have got up to a tenner for them each, because I think that's personally what they're worth. But sometimes I think the die-cast guy, you know, he has certain stock for so long and then just wants to get rid of it. Just to clear some space for new stuff, because that's what he does. He goes to toy fairs and things and trades with friends and whatnot. Right. Actually, what I'm going to do, 
deal with what's on this. And I can't remember what stall this came from, but it was a different one. Little Hot Wheels. Older Hot Wheels, that's why I got it. Uh, convoy. Unfortunately, someone had taken a black pen to that trailer. And that's definitely not the right cab for it. Now, I have been gradually cleaning this off, but I've dropped the toothbrush in the uh, bottle of IPA and I can't get the bloody thing out now. <laughs> um, I really don't know how I'm going to get that out of there. So, uh, the IPA has been working. It's just because there's so many grooves on this. It's a bit difficult to get in between them. But that's quite a rare style of trailer to find. That's why I uh, wanted it and wanted to clean it up. I mean, I've got that and a few other items from the same guy, all for a fiver, including this Corgi trailer, which I've already got one of, but the other one's missing a door. This one's got both doors. Um, oh, the stick is okay on this side, it's a bit damaged on that side. So, I'm going to take a look at the one up on the shelf. If the stickers are better and the trailer's in better condition overall, then I'm just going to steal a door from this one. If not, I'm just going to swap the trailers over <coughs> and have one with doors. Here's another little convoy I picked up. It's missing the rear door, but you know, if I display it, you can hide that easily. I don't know if that's the correct cab for that. I was just looking through the box and that was the best match I could find. No, I won't, well, there weren't really many in that box. These were two of the other ones that were in there and I'm pretty certain neither of these would go with it. And we've got another trailer. I nearly had a red version of that trailer but then I noticed it was sort of U-shaped. <laughs> Kind of put me off. Right, I'm going to get these out of the way next. So this was a charity shop buy. It's going to be a bit mixed now between Carver and charity shop, I think. Little Oxford diecast special edition Land Rover Series One, which is Howden's Joinery Co. I'm not sure if this is O scale. So I know Oxford Diecast, they mainly concentrate on models for model railways and things, so that's why I'm thinking that might be O gauge, but it doesn't say anything on it. It doesn't give a gauge or a scale. <clears throat> uh, right, back to car boot stuff now, so... I've got this Cararama Range Rover. I've got this from the car boot here in town yesterday, uh, Sunday. Tarmac, don't, tarmac still exists, they just don't use this colour scheme anymore. I've got that and I've got the cement mix. I wonder what other trucks Corgi did. Turn um, that. What else have we got? There's some more Corgi. Corgi cut. And I just realised there's something red wedged above the um, driver's seat. But Mercedes van, the T TNT overnight van. I've got at least one of these vans box, not a TNT van, I can't remember what it is but it's not a TNT van. And then we've got the police um, Porsche, although the police stickers have all worn off because Corgi like to use stickers on a lot of their vehicles. So someone's obviously pulled them off at some point and the paint has wore off on the blue beacon which I can soon repaint that. Pay a lot. I actually paid 125 for the van. I don't know why I didn't just call it 150. Uh, I 
don't know if I ever paid for this set or not, because I can remember when I was younger buying sets like this from Misto. A five car set. I must have bought most of them, because I'm looking on the back here and I can remember having most of these. <laughs> Yeah, we've got the Pizza Pizzeria, the little Volkswagen Golf. I'm not sure what the um, airport shuttle vehicle is. I think I've got the auto automotive parts delivery van. I think I might have that. Got the uh, US parcel services and whatever that, and that looks familiar as well. I might have that one. I might actually have a few of these. I'm going to have to look in my box of Maystow vehicles to have a look now. Because if I have got most of them loose, then I'm not going to open that. I won't bother. Alrighty, what have we got? Um, a few more charity shop finds here. Grab those. Oh, I forgot. We've got some Facebook finds in here as well. So we've got the uh, Voxel Amiga police car. Ford Escort Cosworth rally car and an evening news van. And that's because I thought it was rather funky. A Hot Wheels uh, articulated truck where you can put a Hot Wheels car in the back. This little bit slides out. This is another new one, Ford Mustang from Hot Wheels, I had no idea Hot Wheels made models like this, twin turbo as well, friction motor on the back, but I bought it because Mustang, and believe it or not these are $9.99 which I thought was a bit steep personally, but I did like the Mustang and that's why I spent it. I really didn't like any of the other ones enough to spend that money. Like I said, I, I feel I really don't like spend. No, I spent nine ninety nine on that. I still think it's too much. Um, right, I think we're we're almost there. Oh, there's another charity shop find. I got this with the Escort, the Hot Wheels truck. And the evening news van and the Amiga, Voxel Amiga police car. Right, have a look at this one, there's a car boot find. Now, I think I've got this in red, I think. <laughs> Unfortunately we're missing the tailgate, but I'm not too worried about that. You know, the way I display a lot of my models, you wouldn't see that anyway. And the rest of it is in pretty good condition, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Right, oh, I think I've got something here that's from the diecast guy, if I remember correctly. Oh, nope, got another couple of items from him. Yep, I just found another one buried in here. And another one. I'll go through all those in a minute. over here we'll do the rest of the car boot stuff. Right, <laughs> I think that's it. We'll do the rest of the car boot stuff now. So I've got a Corgi BP tanker. I think I'm, I'm pretty certain I've already got this up on the shelf so I don't even know why I bought that. Corgi written on it. Well, that feels really cheap and horrible even for Corgi. But it's still got the pipes on the back, so that's a bonus. Then we've got a Majorette uh, postal van. What we got? Just a ge generic ch um, Chinese made American police car. 
So cheap that they even put flashy lights on the roof just to bring up the floor. Matchbox Porsche 928, which I've already got, but that one is actually in better condition. Just. Another Matchbox GT, one that I didn't have. And a Matchbox Volvo. Yes, it is actually a Volvo. I think that car I just threw down there just bounced out of the box. Uh, what else have we got? Let's get out another handful. Um, Matchbox Jeep. Matchbox Snowplow, version that I didn't have. And it's got the plow on the front, which is a bonus. Is that not missing? Corgi Fiat. I'm pretty certain I don't have it in that colour. Corgi Crane with the hook, surprisingly. And a Corgi Roadline lorry. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Hot Wheels Mustang, again because Mustang, in case you didn't know that is my favourite uh, American muscle car, my little red Alfa Romeo which is better than the other one I've got, got a colour changing Ford LTD police car, I have got four maybe five of these now count this one but this one paint wise is in way better condition a little bit of rust coming through on the axle, so it's been somewhere damp, but it's paint wise isn't in better condition. Uh, I can't read the bottom of that. Oh, I've got that as well. Got a very um, rough looking police wagon. I really don't know why I bought that, to be honest. Corgi, Aston Martin, with some stripe on the side of some sort. Uh, Hot Wheels truck. A Matchbox Lamborghini. Another Hot Wheels, and I can't quite see on the bottom what it is. It's a fantasy car. And we've got a little Lesney, I think it's a Lesney Tipper. I think it's looking pretty certain it's Lesney. Bedford 7 ton Tipper, yeah, made in England by Lesney. Not in bad shape either, to be fair, you know, considering its age. Toyota AE86. I don't know why I couldn't see that. Right. So I've also got another one of these, which did, until I took it off, have the tow hook. Now this cost me a pound and it did come in a box, but the box was pretty much wrecked. Um, and I've already got this. So I literally bought this for a quid specifically because I wanted that hook. So I did butcher it intentionally. Because I wanted the hook to go on this one. I've never ever seen this one before and I've not seen one since I've owned this. Which leads me to believe that this one could be quite a rare version. It was missing its hook, so I felt this one deserved it there because you can find these quite easily, that version of the BP one. 
I've actually got quite a few, most of them are missing the hooks or something, but apart from the one that I've got on the shelf, which is complete. So now that one can go up on the shelf. And uh, I've actually just realised I've got another charity shop find that I forgot about. Set of three Maisto cars, we've got the Dodge Viper, the Corvette and an Audi TT convertible. Now I've got a couple of Facebook finds. And that's just the rest of the uh, Diecast Guy stuff that I got like, over a month ago. So I saw these advertised on Marketplace, just down the, they were just down the road from me. We've got the uh, Corgi Bedford uh, Simmons Snorkel. Now I have got another one of these, which is in the box on the floor over there, but this one is in like 10 times better condition. Um, you know, the chrome bars here that operate the mechanism are in way better condition. Paint works in way better condition. This actually rolls nicer as well. And this has got a full fire crew on it. It's got three guys in the back there and two in the front. Yeah, two in the front. He's hard to see at some angles. So, yeah, I've got that. I'm put it back in the box actually now that it's empty. And I've got this one with it, which is not in the best of conditions. It's got a couple of ladders missing. This ladder doesn't actually work properly. And we've got a chunk of window missing. But, uh, yeah, I've wanted one of these for a while for the collection, so now I've got one. even drink that much Pepsi and I'm already burping away. Uh, I'll worry about, worry about picking it up in a minute. So, that's another one I got off the diecast guy. A guy warrior one. Now, I've got a few busted ones of these only because they still have the tyres intact. And in my opinion, if you collect die casts like this, they're always good to have them for, just for the tyres. Um, but yeah, this one's actually complete and in working order, so that's why I nabbed that one. And you've got a dinky truck here, it's a Dodge truck if I remember correctly, yep. Chevrolet and Pali. Is this dinky or is it Corgi? Corgi. Uh, got a little dinky fit. Can't get it in the right. Fiat 600. I am very tempted to give that a fresh coat of paint actually. So I think that would look really nice painted up. And oddly enough, that fits perfectly on that Matchbox Transporter. Um, then we've got a dinky Leyland tractor. The guys come unstuck. And Farmer Giles needs to sit back on there. He needs to come out of his little hole. He just needs gluing back in, that's all. I'll do that at some point. I just realised he's got a broken arm as well. Poor farm, and he's still working. Got a Lone Star locomotive with a—it's an American locomotive with a um, British Rail logo on the side. And I don't quite know how that works, but apparently it does, <laughs> according to Lone Star. Now I've got Corgi Scimitar, Reliant Scimitar in superb condition compared to my other one. That's why I got that. We've got a um, Husky. Yep, this one's a Husky. With the camera guy still there. 
of all the Husky models I've got, that is probably, you know, in the best condition. And a Matchbox Renault Le Car, Renault 5 Le Car, because that is in near enough mint condition as well. And that is everything. That is, yeah, that is actually everything. I think that actually uh, brings my collection and new editions up to date. I'm trying to decide if I'm actually hungry yet or not. No, I don't think I, I think I'll leave that a little longer. I'll go get a takeaway tonight because I'm too tired for anything else. If I've not dozed off before then, I'm going to get this video edited and uploaded. Okay. Yeah, I'm really hoping it's not going to be wet and miserable like it was today. So I want to ride over to Mum's and just have a play around in the workshop. And if it is, I'm taking this with me the camera and tripod and whatnot. Anywho, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, any questions regarding my collection or any of my collections for that matter, feel free to leave a comment and ask. Um, if there's any part of my collection you specifically want to see, um, you'll have to let me know. And actually, I have just remembered, I nearly forgot, Nearly, nearly, nearly forgot. Just before we end. Here we go. One advantage with this new tripod I've got is it's a lot lighter, so it's a lot easier to do this with. Let me just move the cat's tin out of the way. Now, there it is. I did say I'll give us a, a closer view of it. So you've got the door lock on there as well as the door handle, the mirror. I'm trying to turn the screen round without hitting the record button because it's touch screen. See, look at that. It's amazing. The detail is just amazing on this. The hood opens, the trunk opens. Those wires are for some lights that aren't currently connected. They're installed, they're just not connected up. And I really do not feel up to messing around with that. The trunk opens and we've got a spare tire and a spare bag of screws in the back there. That is really heavy. That's heavier than the doors and the doors look bigger. Yeah, it is a, a lovely model. I want to turn it upside down so I can see if they've gone through all the detail, you know, with all the suspension components and whatnot. I imagine they have. I can't imagine they would go through all that effort and not do that. Right. So, as I was saying before I suddenly remembered about that, <laughs> thanks a lot for watching everyone. If you like the video then please thumbs up, if you didn't, a thumbs down. And uh, maybe consider subscribing um, for more videos like this one. Or maybe you're into your model railways, maybe you like... Um, various lamps and lighting you know I do I do lots of different videos I do bicycles as well so you know, it's quite a variety I'll try to keep it a, a variety channel anyway I'm rambling um, I'm good at doing that uh, if you check the video description down below the video here I will be putting links in there to my other two YouTube channels if you're into your gaming I do have a gaming channel if you want to see more about the Lego 
as if I've got lots of that around the place. I've got a channel for that as well. And I have a Twitch channel. Um, and a Discord server, which I haven't got on screen at the minute. So uh, maybe feel free to check those out and consider subscribing and joining and following and whatnot. And uh, thanks in advance if you do decide to subscribe and whatnot. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.